Ceiling unlimited. Man has always looked to the heavens for help and inspiration. And from the skies, too, will come his victory and his future. Hello, Americans. This is Orson Welles, speaking for the men and women who make Lockheed and Vega aircraft. If you will turn back the pages of your favorite magazine to the advertising section of a recent issue, you'll find a striking message sponsored by Lockheed and Vega's brothers in aviation at Vaulty. A message based on a most provocative illustration. The fellow with a familiar small mustache, the lunatic fringe of hair, the paranoiac eyes, reaching for the globe, while four phantom figures watch him anxiously. King Philip II of Spain, Louis XIV of France, Napoleon, the Kaiser, looking on in envy as the madman reaches out to put a strangling grip upon the world. And underneath the caption, simple and significant, Hitler came the closest. Well, that's true, of course, he did. And how do you think the others feel about it? Philip, Louis, Napoleon, the Kaiser, the other four who might have ruled the earth. Where are they now? Into what far corner of oblivion have they retired? What are they thinking as the tide of centuries rolls by? Please, Excellency, if I may ask it, why have you invited us to attend this conference? Ah, Monsieur Napoleon, restless as always. Are you uncomfortable, perhaps a ah. little warm? Ah. <laughs> Believe me, you'll get used to it in time. Another century or two? But, Senor, for a conference like this, where are the others? Caesar and Charlemagne. Yeah, and Genghis Khan. Oh, I could have asked a dozen others like yourselves, but most of them are rather old. You four, I thought, would be the most compatible. Having so very much in common. Monsieur, I trust you do not class me with these paltry fellows. Senor Napoleon, you speak of Philip II of Spain. Look to your manner, sir. I am the oldest here. The oldest? Yes, yes, the oldest, not the most important. Huh? I have more pages in the Encyclopedia Britannica. Excellency, is not that true? Quite true, Monsieur Napoleon. A most absorbing record filled with the greatest victories. Barring Waterloo, of course. Ah, Waterloo, Waterloo. Why must you always remember Waterloo? No man ever faced such odds. The world was leagued against me then. What of my world, monsieur? Have you not heard of the Grand Alliance? All those nations banded against Louis XIV? Ah, uh, yeah, me too. In 1918, I'm fighting the whole world. Senores, believe me, it is not how many, but how strong those stubborn ducks. How can you oh, reckon them again? Gentlemen! Oh, oh, gentlemen! Thank you. You understand, of course, I do not underrate the work that any of you did for me on Earth. Of course, comparisons are always odious. To whom could you compare us, sir? Well, there is a man on earth today, a genius of a fellow, an organizer. He plans to turn the whole world like a mill and grind out what he needs. What? The entire world? Oh, yes. And even that might not be quite enough for him. <laughs> he even looks on me with something of disdain. He thinks my red flannels are a bit old-fashioned. I'm afraid he hopes one day to take my place. To rule here in your place, monsieur? Who is this man? If you will turn your attention to the wall, look at the map. A map? Oh, I had not noticed this before. Naturally, Wilhelm. It wasn't there. Caramba! This is a strange map, senor. Yes, Philip, a very special map. It breathes and pulses with the world. It trembles, shudders. Sometimes even cries aloud. If I may say it, sir, this is a devilish clever thing. Monsieur Napoleon, you flatter me. Look, look, look at the map. Some parts are turning red. Why do they turn red, monsieur? Very at times your ignorance is monumental. It's blood that turns those countries red. The blood of men and women, flowing as only rivers flowed in your benighted days. All this, all this is blood. Look at the map. Starting there from Germany, see how the bloody torrent races on. See how it sweeps upon the Czechs. You hear those cries? Those are the cries of Lidice, despoiled and ravaged, ground to dust beneath an army's iron heel. Yeah, this is very systematic. That distant thunder now, that's Poland, Warsaw. Such a proud and lovely city, crumbling in upon itself. The ghetto and the boulevard at last, united in their common ruin. Rather thorough, don't you think? Well, next. Next to the north. Norway takes a mere few days, you see. Then south again, the lowlands, 
Rotterdam. Oh, stubborn, Doc. Ah, but this time, Philip, their stubbornness is no defense. In 30 minutes, 30,000 of them die. 30,000? Santa Maria! No, don't thank her, my friend. Thank me. My friends. You did your best on Earth, of course, or should I say, your worst. But possibly your talents weren't scaled for things like this. What things, senor? Great battles that are named for oceans and for countries, not for streams or towns or puny villages as they were in your day. Death multiplied a million times. Whole centuries destroyed in half an hour or less. Oh, yes. This fellow Hitler serves me very well indeed. Hitler? Hitler. I do not recall the name, monsieur. Uh, what is his family? Well, Louis, there seems to be some doubt about his ancestors. But still, senor, to do all this, he must be a most great general. Natürlich, Philip. Is he not trained in Germany in my war? Wilhelm, in your war, the fellow was just a bad corporal. I like to think his training came from me. Hitler, Hitler. Monsieur, which it raised this one? Hitler first or fourth or eighth or what? <laughs> Those foolish men on earth. They say he will be Hitler the last. But first or last... You mean for him to conquer all the earth? That is my plan, Monsieur Napoleon. Oh, oh, what a pretty picture that will be. All men reduced to craven slavery. Food bought with tears and suffering. New life created just to be destroyed. In spite of the resistance of such people as the free French, the English, the Norwegians, the Russians. Monsieur, you mean this Hitler has invaded Russia too? Oh, yes. Oh, Monsieur Napoleon, my sympathy, if that brings certain bitter memories to you. Ah, oh, it will to him too. Excellency, this is where he fails. He makes the same mistake. Oh, no, my friend. You see, he has an instrument you didn't have. A new weapon, senor? A new gun, yeah? Oh, more than that, much more. Something that projects through time and space, that reaches to the furthest corners of the earth. With such a weapon, I could have ruled the world. Why did you give it to him? Ah, but I didn't, Monsieur Napoleon. I didn't give it to him. It was designed to be an instrument of peace and brotherhood. But mankind put it squarely in his hand and begged naively for their own destruction. But, Excellency, Of I course, don't... they didn't realize it at the time. That's precisely where my Hitler's genius lies, to take an instrument they meant for good and warp and twist it to my ends. Those silly, stupid men on earth. They thought they could escape me in the skies. They spread their little mortal wings and tried to fly. And then I spoke to him, a little whispered word that made him smile in gratitude. How well he understood. How happily he took those human wings and made them beat with fury and with rage, the very wings those other foolish ones had built in joy and hope. Believe me, gentlemen. Majesty, Majesty, your humble servant. You have returned most opportunely, I should say. What have you to report? Nothing, Majesty. I had no luck at all. You went as I directed you? Oh, yes, Majesty. I traveled far and wide through all America. Yes. I, I went to Valti first. Yes. The women working at the machines, I thought they'd be the easiest. Yes. I reasoned, pleaded, tempted them in every way I knew. Well? They wouldn't stop their work. They simply smiled and said, the devil with you. And what about the men? I went to Lockheed, Majesty. Those men were difficult. I whispered to them. I said... I work so hard, they'll pay you just as much money for less work. What do you care what happens later? What did they say? All the same thing, Majesty. They said I could go straight... Enough! And... You failed me, then. I couldn't help it, sire. If you could see America awake, aroused... Excuses, nothing but excuses. Be gone, you idiot. Out of my sight. Fools, you fools! That woman and that man are making planes. Planes, Mr. Yes, planes. The instrument I hoped that he alone would use. You gave Hitler that How advantage? Else? How else could his greedy finger span the earth? How else could he come so close to all the things you dreamed but never did? How else but through the air? So close. Now to fail so miserably. Ah, then he fails too as I we fail. I know America. They'll answer him five planes for one. Destroy him in the very frames I showed him. How to light. One day he'll merely be a name that's gone. Like all the rest of you. If I may say so, sir, he'll make a notable addition to our group. I doubt if he'll enjoy it much, monsieur. For one who fails me so colossally, I have a plan. A very special plan, no doubt. A very special plan. 
One day I'll give him all airplanes that are made. Senor. And all the guns and powder, all the armaments. Monsieur, you can't. It isn't fair to us. Senor, you give him airplanes. Yes, everything. Everything but men. No men, monsieur? Since he has learned to hold all human life so cheap. No men. No men. <laughs> Excellency, my compliments. A most ingenious plan. No man. <laughs> this will be pure hell for him. Well, after all, Monsieur Napoleon, precisely where do you think you are? Any further orders, Majesty? Or is that the end of it? Is it the end or just a new beginning I must make? You see, I know the world rather well. Don't I, world... You're tired, aren't you? You're weary with the sight of blood and suffering. You wish the war were done and over with. And what will happen when it is? Shall I tell you, world? Shall I tell you what you'll do? You'll sit about a table and contrive a peace and document it with the same mistakes you made before. You'll tell yourself that never, never can there be a war again. And you'll relax. Oh, yes. You'll grow quite fat and lazy in the luxury of your delusion. That's when I'll be back again. That's when I'll add another figure to the five you met tonight. A man who will not fail me as the others have. A man who... Ladies and gentlemen, excuse me. I think I've had enough playing the devil... And just for a moment, I'd like to be Orson Welles, taxpayer and citizen. Let's give the devil his due. He's given us a lot of trouble in the past and promised us a lot more for the future. Unless, of course, this scourge of fire and brimstone that we suffer now will shock us to eternal vigilance. But will it, Americans? Will it? What is our defense against it? The answer, I believe, was stated in the text from which our fable sprang tonight. Hitler came the closest by using the air. Remember, Americans. Remember, world. And never again be unprepared. Never again be caught with folded wings while madmen fly across the sun and put the shadow of despair upon the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to say here how very nice it is to be back again, even for a short visit, with my old and good friends who bring you this program. We had a real Mercury cast tonight, and that was nice, too. Here it is. Napoleon was George Coulouris. Philip, Pedro de Cordoba. Louis, Joe Kearns. The Imp. Lou Merrill, Hans Conrad was the Kaiser. This is Orson Welles speaking for the men and women of Lockheed and Vega. I'm proud to speak for them. Thanks for listening. And until next time, I remain as always obediently yours. Next week, our guest will be Joey Brown, newly returned from the South Pacific. Tonight's story was written by Harry Cronman. The music was written and directed by Anthony Collins. This program has come to you from the Lockheed and Vega Aircraft Corporation of Burbank, California. Patrick McGeehan speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.